workflow. Let's go. Thank you. Okay, excellent. So welcome you all to the presentation of the PhD thesis by Olga Slizovskaya, uh, named Audiovisual Deep Learning Methods for Musical Instrument Classification and Separation. So this presentation uh, comes with the presence of a, a committee that will uh, assess the, the work uh, that uh, with the presence of Dr. Xavier Serra from Universidad Pumpeu Fabra, and Dr. Estefania Cano from A-Star Singapore, and myself, Xavier Giro from the Universidad Politécnica de Catalunya. So um, now, Olga, you will have between 45 and 60 minutes to present your work. So if you want to start trying to share the screen, meanwhile, you, that's something you can already do. And then later, uh, there will be a round of questions uh, from the members of the, the panel, of the evaluation panel uh, with the candidate. So we can clarify any questions or comment on the work that Olga has presented. Yeah. Is there any question, Olga, that you may have? No, I think it's quite clear. Thank you. Very good to go. Cool. Yeah. So, Olga, I think that the screen is yours. In this case, we should say something like this. So please try to adjust between these 45 and 60 minutes that you have to present okay. your work. Please go okay. ahead. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, so, dear committee, my dear supervisor and everyone, first of all, thank you for coming. I'm glad and proud to be here with you today. And today I'm, I'm defending my PhD thesis titled Audiovisual Deep Learning Methods for Musical Instrument Classification and Source Separation. The presentation will be organized as follows. It has, at first I will talk about audiovisual MIR and motivation overall. Uh, about the goals of this work, of this study, and the problems that we address, uh, then we'll the, then I will go presenting the task that we were working on, audio, namely audiovisual musical instrument classification and audiovisual source separation, and then I will move to the conclusions of the thesis. <clears throat> so let me begin with my motivation with audiovisual and MIR in general. So um, the, complement, the complementary relationship between audio and video data drives multimodal studies across various, across various domains and problems. Within that scope, uh, we emphasize the important role that visual modality plays in music performance and conduct a study on multimodal data fusion techniques in the music information retrieval domain. Uh, in this first part, I will outline challenges in, audio, in audiovisual music information retrieval. So what is audiovisual MIR and why do we study it? Um, I would like to start with some motivation story, introductory story, then then I was 11 years old, my music teacher brought me to compete to a prestigious like um, musical competition in my area and somehow passed through a regional selection stage. Uh, I did not proceed further, but I remember that the experience of watching, literally watching, not listening, the performances of uh, other participants, especially the senior ones. Uh, and it was a feast of perform performance techniques, both in terms of technical and artistical point of view. Um, and I recall that we discussed for a couple of weeks everything that we saw and tried to adapt some tricks and so on. And that was my first immersive experience of how highly multimodal could be our perception of music performance. But definitely not the last one, because many years have passed and at any live concert I watch maybe even more than I listen, especially if the scene is complex. And we as a kind, as humans, are very good in and efficient in aggregating information that comes from different perception channels in, in order to make sense of what around us and although it is still unclear how we're doing it. Uh, on the other hand, machine learning algorithms are not as good as humans and multisensory information merging and there are still many problems that remain open especially for complex things that involve that involve multi-domain analysis multi-multimodal analysis 
Within the area of music information retrieval, there are many tasks that can benefit from our from audiovisual from audiovisual analysis, for example, alignment, transcription, separation, localization, or tagging, and. Uh, so it is indeed very important to study audiovisual, uh, to study music information retrieval from audiovisual perspective. So uh, let us see why it is unsolved yet. What are the challenges in audiovisual music information retrieval? And actually, first of all, uh, that is not solved because of Pareto principle. Because first of all, all the above tasks uh, can be solved with audio only models and can be solved quite efficiently because audio mo only models already provide a high quality baseline for, for many of these tasks. So, um, and in order to move from an audio only approach to a multimodal approach, of, there are some serious obstacles that one should overcome in order to benefit from a multimodal data. Some of them, and it's not clear how much boost you can achieve by using audiovisual approach with respect to audio only approach. So uh, the challenges that we have in audiovisual music information retrieval uh, are the followers. So there are shortage of dedicated data set, definitely. At the same time, the, in the available data that we have, sometimes it has low quality. It always has large diversity in that, in the data set. We also have, dimensionality mismatch problems. Um, that is to say, uh, in order to make use of two different modalities, we should find something like a lowest common denominator for different, for different representations. And then in the representation vector space, once we have it, we have to aggregate somehow these vector spaces from different modalities in the preferably in, opti in the optimal way. And while doing all that, we should take into account that multimedia data is heavy and the computing power is limited. With all those challenges in mind, uh, we defined, we would, we can define a primary objective and primary search goal of the study. So um, in this PhD thesis, uh, we aim to propose modern and efficient audiovisual methods for different MIR problems. In order to achieve this goal, we focus on several research questions as well. Uh, given, given certain types of data representation, uh, we should know at which stage we want to merge them and how should we do it. So for the question of which stage we want to merge different data representation, there are three common approach, which is denoted in the literature as early fusion, uh, late fusion and hybrid fusion. For the early fusion, the idea is that um, we mix data representation from different perception channels uh, at the earliest stages and then optimize them jointly <clears throat> and then optimize them jointly to solve the underlying task. For the um, late fusion, we optimize data, we optimize data representation from different modalities separately and join a very high level concept for to resolve the underlying task. And for the hybrid fusion, at first, we obtain data representation, which are processed independently uh, and may represent feature-like concept or semantic concept. And then it comes to the emergent step. We have uh, several more steps where the data is processed together and aggregated together. So for the second question of how should we merge data from different sources? There are also several approaches several conditioning techniques, which can be named as concatenation or additive conditioning, uh, multiplicative conditioning or multiplicative scaling, and feature-wise linear modulation, which is a generalization of the previous, of the previous two. 
Uh, so let us move forward and uh, move to the first task that we approached, which is audiovisual musical instrument classification. For the, uh, for the classification setup, the informant definition of the problem would be having a video, having a recording video, which has a musical instrument in, the, in it. We would like to have a model which can say which is the predominant instrument in this video. So uh, I will play a short excerpt of this of, of a sample video, which is a real training sample, actual training sample from one of the data set that we use. <laughs> And this example demonstrate, uh, demonstrates all the challenges that I was outlining a couple of slides ago. So it is diverse indeed. It doesn't, it has quite low quality and, and so on. Uh, I would like to just shortly ask if the audio level is okay, if I want to play more example. Yeah, okay, perfect. So in this case, um, I will move to the formal problem definition then. So for the classification setup, we have a set of objects in n-dimensional rational space, which somehow represents our frames and audio data, and a set of class labels, which are one-hot vectors, and uh, the final subset of labels for each sample. Um, and we want to predict the final subset of labels for, for every sample, for, for every sample X here. From here on, I'm using colorized equations and each parameter, it has its own color in, in every equation and it matches in the following descriptions. So uh, the formal definition of the problem is, is this. We want to find parameters for some model. We want to define the model first and to find parameters of that model that gives class estimation probabilities for every sample. Uh, a common choice to learn these parameters theta is for back propagation algorithm, um, especially in the deploying setup, of course, in order, and we should minimize some loss function. So for multi-label classification, the loss function, uh, usually it's a categorical cross entropy, and we want to measure the categorical cross entropy between ground truth and estimated probability distribution of class labels. Uh, that's the full formal problem definition here. So let me introduce now the multimodal, first multimodal approach that we used to solve this task. Um, we make use of the hybrid and late fusion here with concatenation conditioning. So uh, having audio input and video input in the frame-based approach, we experience with different underlying representation for audio and visual frames, and then concatenate to representation and jointly optimize them to obtain class probabilities. Uh, for the audio representation, we use underlying input of the ML spectrograms with several audio architectures. All of them are inception-like architectures with different number of parameters and different deepness and different regularization and so on. For the visual model, it was a bag of frames model processed with an inception with free architecture. Um, and we experimented with different number of frames for depending on the data set and so on. Um, we perform the task on mid-scale and large-scale level. At the mid-scale level, we use we use Fudan Columbia video data set, which already had a class of musical performance with instrument. And it's a mid-scale data set with 12 different instrument classes, 5,000 videos, about 216 hours of data. And at the large scale, we had to predefine a subset of YouTube 8 million videos data set which was a um, subset originally containing 230, 
house, <laughs> 230,000 of videos, and we had to normalize this data set in order to, to make the glasses more balanced. At the end, it contained about 40, 46 classes and 60,000 60, videos. Um, after, the, um, after the preliminary study, we, for audio visual model, we used uh, exception and choice architecture for, for the audio method and several different number of frames for for processed from, from video stream. And here I only outlined the F1 measure for, for shortness. Now, so we compare exception and choice architecture and they performed compatibly at the beginning as audio only models. So that's why we choose them as, as the baselines here, well, as the final solutions here. Uh, you can see, so let me explain, let me first explain what a different columns in this table means. So the first column uh, notes the F0, F1, F1 measure for audiovisual only, uh, audiovisual model. The second column is F1 measure for audio only model, is the delta between audiovisual model and audio only model. And the third column is the delta between audiovisual only um, audiovisual model and visual model only. So you can see that in all cases except except one case, audiovisual model performs better. So what is that case? It was the case of YouTube 8 million video dataset in which audio only model performed better. And we decided to analyze it in more details. And it turned out that YouTube 8 million videos data set had some notation problems. So I will shortly explain what is the issue with this single, ex single exception. Uh, for example, the semantic concept that were present in audio source and visual source were completely different in many cases. For example, all these samples are, sam are samples which supposedly should be representing the concept of piano performance. And these are also piano performances, <laughs> all of them. And these are also piano performances, although they're, of course, they are not. So, we saw that, that this is the issue and we, we did a small perception study and actually in 50% of cases, it was not possible to identify a musical instrument from, from the visual stream, from the visual modality only. But on the other hand, choice model here performs better and doesn't suffer from, doesn't, doesn't suffer from the performance drop in audiovisual modality. So assumingly it is because of a stronger regularization in the choice model and a fewer number of parameters that it has. Um, for the classification part, the summary of our contributions is the following, that we proposed a new multimodal network for musical, for musical instrument classification. Uh, we demonstrated efficiency of the audiovisual approach and we showed that multimodal fusion is beneficial overall. And that we analyzed the case of multimodal controversial inputs and having the idea, having this idea that simply concatenating the inputs from audio and video modality might not be enough for the controversial input. So let me begin the part three of the presentation, which is audiovisual source separation. And the second, that's the second task that we address. To introduce the topic, like a big picture, general picture, um, I'm going to play three short excerpts of the same composition of the same musical piece and ask you, well, not ask you directly, but propose you to answer a very simple question of 
if you can hear the difference between them. And the second one. And the third one. So from experience, without special training and without listening to the samples few few more times, it's nearly impossible to say what is the difference just, just from listening. But on the other hand, on the other hand, um, now I would like to play the difference between the first and the second sample, between the first and the third sample, and between the third and the second sample again. So it's like a separate separate diff of the mixtures. And the question is the same, if you can hear the, 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 the difference and focus on the difference between those compositions. That was how the first mixture is different from the second and third one. Now I will play the how the second mixture is different from the first and the third one. And the residue of the third mixture with respect to the first one. Um, so it is much clear now that the difference is in there, but it's still not clear if, for example, the separate one and separate two are the same instrument or the different in, are the same instrument with different playing techniques, performance techniques, or it's different instrument completely. And I think I wouldn't be able to say that, but <laughs> that is a good question. Uh, so would it be easier for us to distinguish first and second recordings if we could provide more information. So if, if I would be able to give more guidance and this guidance would be something like this. So using this guidance, it's much easier to identify, simply visually identify that the first separated sample and the second separated sample are actually different musical instruments. Just keeping this in mind, I will move to the formal, to informal definition of the task we are trying to solve, which is single channel source separation. Um, I will, so uh, having a single channel recordings of a musical performance, that is to say is a mixture of many possibly overlapping sources, we would like to be able to estimate the individual tracks. So here's the illustration of the goal. Well, I think it's enough for the illustration. Um, so it's quite useful, quite useful for hearing aid, for music post-production, for music education, pre-processing for other tasks and so on. Um, more formally speaking, uh, we approach the formal program definition. So um, having a mixture which is equal to sum of all its sources, we would like to estimate the individual sources from the mixture. Therefore, we would like to find parameters for some model that gives individual source estimation from the mixture. And there are, well, there are many approaches how to solve it. Oops, sorry. No. There are many approaches uh, how to solve these tasks. Uh, I would outline just two of them. Uh, one approach would be a direct waveform estimation, so predicting from, from a mixture predicting directly time domain signals, 
of the sources. In this case, we would like to optimize uh, L2 loss between predicted and ground truth signal. And another approach is a masking-based approach where we predict um, where we predict a real value mask. In this case, it's a ratio mask. And we, as well, we optimize L2 loss between ground truth and predicted mask. Uh, contrary to contrary to classification, oh, sorry. So we optimize the L2 loss between predicted and and ground truth ratio mask here. Uh, contrary to classification task, there are many aspects of source separation that can be estimated with different metrics. Like for classification, we only used to have one measure and it was enough for source separation, it might be not enough. So we use different metrics to estimate the quality. Some of them are recently proposed metrics. And I will comment on that later then we come to the results. Um, now I would like to shortly discuss the known challenges in source separation and why it is difficult to solve. To mention a few of them, same family instruments are similar to one another. It's quite clear they have similar timber, timber. Also, uh, the mixture may have an unknown in advance number of sources. Another challenge is that complexity of the problem increases then the number of sources increases. And it, it has been shown that the complexity of the task increases with the number of sources. And in our work, we actually tackle the problem not of just uh, two channels source separation, two source source separation, but we address multiple instruments source separation where actual number of sources might be not known in advance. Um, in addition, sources can overlap in time and frequency. And it's especially true for instruments playing in harmony and in unison, which is an often case for musical performances, especially for classical music. So now let us recall the previous slides of the guidance. Uh, and here the question is, if if we can use extra information to prove separation results. In order to answer the, this question, we first conveyed a preliminary study. In the preliminary study, we addressed multi-instruments or separation in time domain. Uh, well, a pre-story that for many years, a standard approach for this task had consisted in estimating binary or ratio mask, and then you apply it to the magnitude of mixture spectrogram in order to obtain the magnitude spectrogram of the, of the sources, and then you reconstruct the original sound, sound using either mixture phase or phase reconstruction algorithms. And uh, was we lose some information that can be useful in, in theory if we work in, with time domain signals. That's the primary motivation of using the time domain, time domain estimation here. Uh, we make use of hybrid fusion here and we use multiplicative conditioning on instrument labels in the preliminary study, not only in the, pre in the preliminary study. So, um, let me briefly explain the architecture that we propose. Again, the task from the mixture we estimate in different sources. Overall, in deep learning, uh, in the deep learning based source separation, there are a huge variety already of different architectures. And all that started from an encoder, encoder decoder model, um, a safety based encoder decoder model. Then people started to use uh, UNET models with with residual connection between, between layers. Uh, then wave unit was proposed. We adapted the original wave unit architecture, making it, making it possible to use with the unknown number of sources, because in, in our expanded wave unit, it will later dedicate it, uh, noted as expanded wave unit, we predict uh, one instrument per 
the output of the network is a searching possible instrument that are present in the register data set, which were original. Oh, sorry. Um, so the contribution, the, our contribution here is the expanded number of sources and um, hybrid conditioning with labels. We use ground roof labels, which is a relatively weak conditioning and we apply this modulation in the bottleneck of the wave unit. Uh, in our experiments, we used a uh, University of Rochester data set of musical performances. So far, it is the only data set, it is the only data set, as, as far as I'm concerned, that has only multimodal audiovisual data set that has real mixtures and clean ground truth. So um, it has pretty different instruments in the recordings, but only 44 videos. So it's 44 different, um, different arrangements of not even 44 pieces. It's less, less than 44 pieces. As we only estimate one instrument at a time, we excluded some some videos which are doing so the same instrument. Uh, our our approach is not capable of doing that. So there are forty pieces in total, forty videos only, like about uh, which is distributed the whole as, as follows: it's twelve duets, twenty trios, and four quartets. In total, there are forty-eight unique audio tracks, and we train and test split as follows. So we train indeed on 13 musical pieces in a very firm domain, um, which is about which is about one hour and a half of of data. So this is a video demo of the results that we obtained in the preliminary study. As you can hear, there are some problems, the source leakage in the estimation, which is which is handled, uh, which which can be measured by SIR metrics, source to inference metrics that we'll discuss right now. So we compared our method with informed NMF approach, which was the closest method able to separate sounds of different instruments and it uses pre-trained timbre models, which is different from ours. And surprisingly, our method performs better in artifact estimation because, well, it's, it's quite clear actually, because we estimate the audio directly and we have audio directly. So we do not introduce artifacts. And in negative, uh, non-negative matrix factorization, you of course introduce artifacts due to, due to filtering. And comparing the expanded wave unit with the conditioning wave unit, we can see that condition, conditioning with labels improves results in terms of SDR, source to distortion ratio, and source to inference ratio. So that was a good baseline. And we also did some analysis comparing how performance changes due to the different then with the different number of sources in the mixture. Um, however, one of the first challenges that we mentioned is that we are looking for efficient models and we have to perform audiovisual uh, audiovisual uh, source separation and uh, but performing source separation in time domain uh, was but violence pain was very computationally intense, especially if we would like to continue with multimodal approaches. And so 
it wasn't scalable. Another issue was that, again, we only had University of Rochester data set, which is 30, 30 samples, and continue experimenting with 30 videos was not an option as well. Therefore, we took a step forward and proposed, proposed another data set specifically dedicated for source separation, for, for audiovisual source separation. Uh, first of all, um, it has the same instruments as the Rochester dataset, which allows us to use a mix and separate approach for, which is separate uh, mix and separate approach for, for training, and evaluate any other any of our model on the Rochester dataset, which has real real case scenario mixtures, real mixtures. So um, yeah, this is a joint work with one descendant from image processing group. Uh, for it has only solo performances. It's a YouTube based data set again. So we had to analyze every video individually. We make semi-automatic and manual quality control of both videos. Mo many of those videos are auditions. So the quality is good. It allows us to use mix and separate approach for training. So to say, creating artificial mixtures at the training time. And it's roughly 10 times bigger than the University of Rochester data set, which is better suitable for deep learning models. It has some extra validations, some extra data, data estimated. I also, okay. Great, we solved one of the problem in data shortage. But another problem was uh, an efficiency of wave net sources, wave, wave time, time domain source separation. So we had to give up on the idea of working in time domain and moved into the spectrogram based models. And for the spectrogram based models, we <laughs> found out that um, we faced a multiple design design choices. And we had to perform an ablation studies to define optimal parameters for the baseline audio only architecture. So after performing all the, after considering all the possible options and performing ablation studies on that, we stopped with the following, with the following ones, which take a CFT uh, representation as input performs uh, loudness normalization models. Uh, we finally using the clear unit without multi-decoder architect multi unit architect architecture and the estimate ratio masks. Therefore, the final loss is MSE L2 loss. This is different from what is written in the thesis because these results are recent, uh, just, just, to, just for you to know. Um, finally, we are able to experiment on multimodal architectures with label conditioning and with visual conditioning. So, um, first of all, let me explain what are the external data, data that we use and how it is processed. So, we used binary and visual contact structure. For the binary vectors, it's uh, one hot encoding, one hot binary encodings. For the visual conditioning, uh, for the pure visual conditioning, we take frames from the individual individual performances, process them with ResNet 50 architectures, and do some max pooling to obtain the visual conditioning vector. Uh, for the visual motion conditioning, uh, it's uh, the first stage is the same. We process it with the ResNet 50, and then we pass it through a LSTM, a small LSTM network, to obtain visual motion conditioning, like. Uh, another decision choice, another decision design design decision that we have to do uh, is how to do the at which stage and how to perform the conditioning. So the conditioning design is the following: having a unit baseline unit architecture, we perform future future wise linear modulation at the encoder at the bot at the encoder, which would be the uh, Early fusion at the bottleneck, which would be hybrid fusion, and at the final 
final level, which would be late fusion. And for multiplicative conditioning, we we only perform it at the late at the later stage, which is based on the intuition that if we want to merge high level concepts, it's better to better to do it than both high level concepts are available already. So. Um, Uh, let me shortly explain this summary of results. Oh, I see that there's a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So here's the summary of results. Without going into details, I would note that different aspects of separation quality can be improved using different type of conditioning. So um, either, either label conditioning or visual conditioning. I would like to mention that these, these results yeah, are not results again that are written in the thesis. They are much more recent. And as a big picture, we noticed that conditioning helped to achieve better SDR in some cases, but importantly, more importantly, overall, uh, both label conditioning and visual conditioning helped to reduce the variance in the estimation of the results, making the methods overall more robust. We also performed um, a set of analysis. For example, this is the analysis of how the metrics evolve then we compare the estimation in duets, trios, and quartets from the Rochester data set. And here it's clear that using the visual conditioning with final multiply approach uh, improves the results in, in all the cases, both for duets, for trios, and for quartets. This is one of the results. Also, we performed the per instrument analysis of the results, which shows some issues in estimation of some instruments like confusion between clarinet and saxophone, for example. Yeah, I can comment it later. And also we use Wiener filtering as a post-processing step because, uh, because of the issues of having in a lot of inference, inferences and source leakage for, for all the sources. So um, let me skip that. And the summary of contributions for the separation part is that we proposed a conditioned model for time domain separation. We contributed to an audiovisual separation data set. We demonstrated efficiency of the audiovisual approach and we conveyed a detailed study for fusion and conditioning methods and architectural choices. Uh, let me... Let me now go to the conclusions. So, overall contribution of the thesis with respect to the goals that we defined at the beginning. So, we aim to propose modern and efficient audiovisual methods for MIR tasks. So, um, for MIR task, we pro we address several tasks, which are classification, audiovisual classification and audiovisual source separation for musical instruments. When we talk about methods, we made an analysis of data fusion techniques and conditioning techniques for the aforementioned tasks. Um, in the scope of audiovisual MIR, we proposed uh, a new data set, which is a solo data set, and uh, we did an analysis of a subset of YouTube 8 million, 8 million videos data set. And we work with the deep learning architecture, trying to address the most recent and most efficient uh, advancement in, in this field, which is fastly emerging and following the evolution of the field as well. With respect to the research focus that we outlined, where can we merge different data representation? It seems like late fusion and hybrid fusion is more suitable for high level concept and early fusion is maybe more suitable for, for strong and continuous conditioning with each layer. And if we want to match high level concept, concatenation and biasing 
can be can be better. And if we have a strong constraint, we can use scaling. Um, the results of this work was were published in in a number of peer reviewed conferences, and we also have one journal publication uh, under revision. Uh, another contribution we contributed to the reproducibility of these results. So nearly all results can be reproduced, and the code is publicly available, and the data set are publicly available as well. Uh, Afro also participated in a number of collaborations. And uh, at last, I would like to thank you, all of my collaborators, of course, and all the people that I met um, in MTG and the image processing groups. It was very, very nice experience, very overall. So thank you, that, that, that would be all. <laughs>